first step is to make the slide. And I recommend starting with this since you want the liquid to stop moving. So the slide itself has a divot. You want to make sure that the divoty part is on the top and not the bottom. And you're going to use solution of one micron spheres in basically contact solution. You might want to give it a little bit of a shake to make sure it's well mixed. And you want to try using three drops and put it in the divot area. Now it's okay if it's four, but two will probably not be enough. You're going to want to put a cover slip on top and you want to try to do this without any bubbles. And the way that I found is the best to do this is you bend the cover slip a little bit by putting one edge down, making contact with the liquid, and breaking it. Try number two on the cover <laughs> slip, not bending quite so much. So not a lot of bend, but still trying to go from one side to the other, and there's no bubbles, so that's good. So then you want to take the slide and put it on the microscope. Now, the first thing is to make sure that the microscope um, head is high enough up. The table that holds the slide goes up and down, so you want to pull that all the way down and then get the slide in place. There's actually a little bit of cloudiness where the divot is and all of the microspheres, so you should be able to make sure that that is um, above where the light comes in. If you use the switch on the right of the microscope, that turns on the light underneath. I find that that works pretty well, and to make it a little more diffuse, you can put just a piece of a chem wiper um, slide cleaning or lens cleaning paper over top of it. So to actually see what the microscope is doing, we're not going to be looking through with our eyes, we're going to be using a camera. So it plugs into the computer for that. After logging into the computer, you're going to need to find the microscope software. Now I have a shortcut on my desktop, but I don't think you will. So if you search for microscope, you should see a program called Digital Microscope Suite 2.0. So searching for microscope should pull that up and it will say that it's connecting the microscope and initially it doesn't look like you're seeing very much. You can click the button that is down here for full screen and now you see a lot more nothing. What you need to do is adjust the focus on the microscope and so you move the table up for that. Now the 40x lens is going to come into view just about when the objective is touching the cover slip. You actually don't want it to touch the cover slip because once the objective touches the cover slip, all of the liquid will start moving around and that's not what you want. So you want to bring it down really, really close, but try not to actually have it touch. And it is okay if it touches, nothing will necessarily break, there's kind of a springiness. And if you start to look up at the screen, you'll see that some of the little dots have come into focus. This is with the light all the way up. So now you can see that there are some dots. Now some dots look kind of lighter than the background and some are dark, and that just has to do with how they are in the focus plane or not. So you want to kind of just make little adjustments to see how close you can get it in focus. And it's okay that they aren't all in focus as you change the focus, different focus planes come in and out, and that's okay. So that's just me adjusting the focus. But what you want to notice is that they're kind of bouncing around in place, but they're not all headed to the left or all headed to the right. If you see an overall flow that's bad, and that's likely to happen if the objective has, has touched the slide. So if that does happen, pull it up and just let it settle out. So this is what you want to be seeing. The next step is to take a series of images. And what you want to do is go up to settings under the file menu. And there's a couple of settings you want to check. One is where it's going to save the pictures to. Hopefully it should be within your My Documents somewhere. And then the second thing you want to check is the number of photos in the burst. And I have that set to 50, which is probably a good starting point. Depending on how you do your uh, data analysis, 50 should work, but you could do more. By default, it takes the pictures about every two seconds. So at this point, we've checked our settings. We have 
uh, my particles in focus and so now you want to take the pictures. Now before you do that I'd recommend maybe going and verifying that you don't actually have any pictures in that location so that the only pictures you have there are what you're taking. So right now I actually already have an image set there so I'll delete those and the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to take my new set of images. So to take the image stack, that's the picture, that's the icon to the right of the red dot, which says burst. And when I hit that, it starts taking images every two seconds. The computer will make a little camera noise. Of this, you need to analyze the pictures with ImageJ. So you want to find this program, and if you type ImageJ, you should see an icon that looks like a little microscope and that will hopefully launch it. Now launching it just gives you this little thing up here and the first thing you need to do is calibrate. Now I'm going to post the calibration picture to Moodle so you can download that and use that rather than taking your own image. So you want to open and then go to wherever you save your calibration image to. So you, you look it up, and, and all this is is I took a picture of with the microscope of a calibration slide that was um, at the 40x. So this is your calibration, and what you need to do is enable ImageJ to make distance measurements. Right now it only knows pixel measurements, and so we're going to do a calibration of pixels to distance. So what you can do is draw a line crossing some of these little hash marks where each hash mark is 10 microns wide. So you want to go up to the menu where there's a straight line tool and click on that and then come back over to your image and for instance you can select five bars. So pick either from the left or center or right and start drawing across. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And I haven't drawn it perfectly horizontally. I've tried to draw it orthogonal to the lines. So now I that can... the wrong thing to select. If you go to set scale, it actually automatically puts that distance here. So now you need to put the known distance. I've used five lines and each one it has a spacing of 10 microns. So that's going to be 50. And then unit of length, microns, you can do U, M. Okay. So now it knows what your distance is, and if you go back into the same menu, it actually tells you that your scale is 12.99 pixels per micron, or 13 pixels per micron. So you might get a slightly different number, and that's okay, but you should do this calibration step. So the next step to do is to import your pictures and you want to call these an image sequence and what you do is you go to the folder where they're located which was microscope media for me at least hopefully your pictures are roughly in the same place um, and you'll see a bunch of them and mine actually start at number 83 since I had taken lots of images before that but the only pictures in this folder are the ones that I've taken for this lab all you have to do is select one of them and say open and then it will automatically detect how many images there are and just go ahead and leave the default settings. It should tell you that there are 50 images. So it should say sort names numerically. You want that checked and there's nothing that you should need to change. I hit OK and it starts opening my stack of images uh, like it's a GIF. So there's a, a progress bar on the top right and all 50 are going to be imported. So what you can do is actually use the scroll bar at the bottom to scroll through these, and you can see it's kind of like a little movie now, where it's two seconds between each one. And again, you want to probably scroll through and make sure that you don't have a lot of drift in one, uh, in one direction, but I just see everything moving randomly, so this is good. Before you start making your measurements, you're going to want to set your scale. And you go back up to the set scale menu and you need to enter in the data. Now it was 649 point something, but I can say that that's just 650 and my known distance was 50 microns. And so by doing this, you make sure that 
when it makes your measurements on this image that you actually get the measurements in microns. So you say okay. Now the next step you want to do is modify this point tool. So the point tool looks like a little crosshair and if you double click it brings up some options. The option you want to change is auto next slice. So you need to add that and hit OK. Now you're to the point where you're actually going to use ImageJ to analyze your image. Make sure you're at your first image in the stack and choose one of your particles that you can see. Now as you track the particle it might go in and out of focus, that's OK, but you don't want it to go off the screen, so you probably want to pick one near the center. And I'm going to pick this one here. Now it's not perfectly in focus, but I can see where it is. So I click the center and it automatically goes to the next uh, image. And you can see that the particle moved a little bit, so I click the new center, and I just keep tracking that particle as it moves around, clicking the center. And image J automatically brings up the next one. So in this way, we're measuring the position of this particle as it goes through a random walk. So you want to do this for all 50 images, and at the end, you're going to have a list of measurements of the position. Through 50 times, you want to go to this results window. It's okay that it says the area is zero because you're just drawing points, and it's giving you X and Y values. So you want to save as, and now save this uh, somewhere obvious, my documents would be fine, and you probably want to give it a better name than results. So maybe Brownian Lab Data 1. And you want to actually make sure that it has a file type, and so I'd recommend .csv, and that will let Excel know how to open it. So you save, and now you can go into Excel to kind of look at this data. And this computer does have Excel on it, or you can use a, a different one if you would like, a different computer. And so now when you go and say open, uh, you want to find uh, that data. And instead of all Excel files, you want to say all files, and there you see Brownian lab data. And there it is. So note now that you have your X position and your Y position. What you actually want to calculate is the distance from one slice to the next, so you need to look at both the, the distance in X and the distance in Y, and actually be calculating distance squared, and look at all of these steps and then take your know, mean and standard deviation. So hopefully this part of the analysis, um, the written lab describes it in a little more detail, but hopefully you are able to use Excel to do this.